that's my reality. If I don't have this, I die. It's not up to the Justice Department to decide whether there's efficacy in marijuana. It is the will of the Congress to repress drug abuse and drug use. In the 1990s, activists in California campaigned to legalize the medical use of marijuana by patients suffering from illnesses such as cancer or AIDS. One prominent advocate was Oakland attorney Robert Raich. He was encouraged when the city of San Francisco passed a resolution endorsing medical marijuana. It was non-binding, it was Proposition P, but by about 75% of the vote, the electorate was smart enough to see what the politicians are still to this day reluctant to see, which is that at least for sick patients who need cannabis as medicine, the government shouldn't prevent them from having the medicine that they need. The California legislature later approved a bill legalizing medical marijuana, but it was vetoed by the governor. Raich and other activists decided to pursue a different strategy. So in California, you can have an initiative, put uh, a measure on the ballot, have the people vote for it, and the politicians can't change that. The measure was called Proposition 215. What it really did was said patients who have a recommendation from their doctor to use medical cannabis won't be subject to two specific provisions of the Health and Safety Code concerning possession and cultivation of marijuana. And it said that a doctor wouldn't be subject to any kind of punishment for recommending cannabis to his patients. Its opponents believed that marijuana was a dangerous drug with no proven medical value. The worst thing that'll happen as a side effect with cannabis is, you know, maybe you'll get hungry, which isn't so bad if you happen to have a wasting syndrome. Or maybe you'll feel a little better, you know? That's the side effect that people use it for to get stoned, you know? Well, if you're already sick, maybe feeling a little better isn't such a bad side effect. In November 1996, Proposition 215 passed with 56% of the vote. The voters are smart enough to recognize that just because a patient might need uh, a simple herb that grows out of the ground, it doesn't mean that they are legalizing a dangerous drug for all people. It was now the responsibility of local officials, such as Butte County District Attorney Mike Ramsey, to implement the new law. He thought that Proposition 215 was unnecessary. The proponents of California's medical marijuana law, which I opposed, were painting this broad brush of uh, the jackbooted thugs of law enforcement going out and ripping a doobie from uh, cancer-stricken grandma's lips. If someone is smoking marijuana at that time before the passage for medical purposes, no one was bothering them. Ramsey was critical of how people obtained medical marijuana. Because it was still illegal under federal law, doctors could not officially prescribe it for their patients, but could give them a recommendation. Most doctors will not recommend marijuana. Uh, it's kind of a fringe element, a uh, boutique industry of doctors. That, that's all they do. The, the patient is usually there saying, you know, I. I've got a bad back, I've got uh, hemorrhoids, I've got a ingrown toenail, and I think the only thing that can give me relief is medical marijuana. Despite his concerns, Ramsey was sworn to uphold California law. What we try to do is say, well, how much is enough? What is going to be a situation in which we can say, okay, if you're under this amount, then you're within the spirit, see you later, have a good life. I uh, hope your illness gets better. If you're over this amount, well, now we're going to scrutinize you. Ramsey's office published guidelines that permitted a patient to grow up to six marijuana plants. This was acceptable for people like Butte County resident Diane Monson. For years, she had suffered from chronic back pain. We built this house, my husband and I, and all the stonework out here, and I think that probably is where I injured my back initially, but it's gotten worse through the years. We keep um, animals and have a big orchard, and it's very physical life here. She had tried various remedies, including muscle relaxants like Flexeril. It is effective in dealing with the pain, but it just makes me sleep. 
because you're supposed to take it first thing in the morning, and then, you know, I want to go back to bed. So it didn't work out for me. Some friends suggested that marijuana might be an effective alternative. I gave it a try, and uh, it actually was something that almost immediately gave me relief. I'm not saying it's good for you because I don't think any uh, drug is going to be good for you. That's just my own personal opinion. But I think that it's better than the alternative for me in my life, the alternative being uh, pretty much constant pain. She decided to grow her own marijuana. I didn't want to buy it. I didn't want to break any laws in obtaining what I thought might help. It is a very hot and arid climate here. It's very Mediterranean. We get almost no rain whatsoever, about eight months of the year, and then we get a pretty good rainfall for about four months. It is the perfect condition for growing cannabis, as it turns out. Ramsey's office was investigating a drug dealer who had bought some land from the Monsons. They were looking into whether the Monsons might somehow have been involved. An overflight over Miss Monson's property discovered that there was a, some green in her backyard consistent with marijuana. Went over to a local judge, got a search warrant, and the DEA still following the money on the property that they had sold, uh, asked to tag along, see if there might be some connection they might see during the service of this search warrant. First they came in with a helicopter over the house. Well, that gets your attention. And while you're looking up, uh, they drive in and they had several trucks. It was really quite overkill for what was going on in my little back garden. Knock on the door. Uh, Ms. Munson, a very pleasant person, comes to the door. They show her the search warrant, say, we're here. We understand you have marijuana growing. She says, oh, certainly I do sort of put my hands up and said, this is no problem, guys. You're welcome here. This is a you know simple little six-plant medical cannabis thing happening. Sheriff's investigator, go in the back, count one, two, three, four, five, six, say, okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, it appears that uh, you're well within kind of the guidelines and the spirit of the law. We'll be, we'll be seeing you. Uh, hope you feel better. And as they get ready to leave, the DEA investigators tell the folks, oh, well, we're not leaving. No, it's still a federal crime. We're, we're going to be taking those plans. The sheriffs were saying good, goodbye. We're going to leave. And it was the two federal agents that were with them that said, hold on here, uh, we're not going to leave this cannabis in the ground. Unsure of how to proceed, the deputies called Ramsey. He was shocked that the federal agents were going to take her plants, which were legal under the county's guidelines. I said, you will not let them take those plants. You will pull your gun if necessary. He on the other end said, you know, I don't note the tone of jocularity in your voice that I was hoping to hear. And I said, I'm deadly serious. I'm going to call the U.S. attorney and try and get this straightened out. Ramsey called United States Attorney John Vincent in Sacramento. You're not really going to take six plants, are you? This, this isn't good. This, this can only play into the hands of those that want to use this as a political football. So I can understand. Let me get back to you. I have to call Washington. Vincent determined that the federal government's policy was to seize any illegal drugs found during the course of an investigation. Medical marijuana does not exist in the federal scheme. Medical marijuana is marijuana. Marijuana is a Schedule I controlled substance, and under federal law it's a violation to possess it, to distribute it, to manufacture it. This policy was supported by John Ashcroft, the Attorney General of the United States. He was familiar with California's law. In his view, it did not affect enforcement of federal law. The department had made a decision that we needed to uh, signal that the law was still to be respected. Now, whether there is a reason to have, not to have the federal law, that's Probably a good question, but that's a question that was resolved before these issues came to the Justice Department. It is not up to the Justice Department to veto the will of the Congress of the United States. Vincent called Ramsey back to explain. It's impermissible to have it under federal law. You know, if you start turning away from that, well, where do you stop? If, for example, you see a little bit of methamphetamine. Do you say, oh, well, it's not that much. We'll let somebody have a little bit after we leave. No, it's contraband. We take it. You've got to be kidding me. 
you can't be comparing six plants of marijuana to methamphetamine. Well, uh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's the law, and I said, this is awful. I explained to him we were going to have to do it. Then when he said, well, this is going to cause a problem, I said, well, just put it off on me because I'm the one that's making the determination. So are you going to prosecute Ms. Munson and her six plants? Oh, no, that's well below the federal guidelines. And I said, oh, my God, you're stealing her medicine. Ramsey called his deputies. You won't believe this. They are going to be insistent on taking those plans. We're not going to have an armed confrontation. They're going to do whatever they're going to do, but you will back off, and uh, they're not going with you anymore. The two DEA agents went outside to chop down her plants. There they were, sweating away and cutting down the plants with a hand axe. And these were some pretty healthy plants. While they worked, Monson found a copy of Proposition 215 and read it to them. She wanted to let them know that what they were doing, in her opinion, was illegal. It made me mad. It made me really mad because I was following the rules. I am not a lawbreaker. I am not a candidate for this kind of treatment by my own government. Angel Raish, California's most prominent advocate for medical marijuana, read about Monson's encounter. She was considering filing a lawsuit against the federal government and was actively looking for a plaintiff to join her. When I read about her raid, I, was, I told my attorneys, I was like, that's the girl. We, we want to get her. Throughout her life, Angel had suffered from numerous medical problems, including fibromyalgia, wasting syndrome, and a seizure disorder. She became increasingly disabled as a result of her illnesses. I was actually getting worse and worse, and it was getting harder and harder, and the doctors were trying drug after drug. Nothing was working. It affected her life at home. My youngest was crying at night a lot because I went from being a soccer mom to a mother that couldn't do anything. And she just said, why, Mommy, why? Why can't you do the things that other mommies do? As her condition deteriorated, she became suicidal. A nurse suggested that she try marijuana. I needed to f figure a way to f continue to fight. I went online and I started researching the medical marijuana. And I found that people were getting benefit from it. And so I had a family member um, go out on the streets and obtain marijuana from a drug dealer. And I tried it and I caught some relief and I wasn't throwing up and it was instant. Through her work, she met and later married Robert Raish. She is a patient who would die were it not for medical cannabis. She has a particular constellation of medical conditions which make it so important for her to have cannabis that she would die a rather quick and very unpleasant death if denied this medicine. The moment that I became a medical cannabis patient, I became an activist. I'm not very religious, but I promised God that if he gave me a miracle, I would speak out and tell everybody about this miracle. She felt strongly that patients should have convenient access to medical marijuana. She became increasingly angry when federal agents raided marijuana dispensaries like the Oakland Cannabis Buyers Cooperative, forcing patients to buy from drug dealers. Patients shouldn't have to be ripped off. They shouldn't have to know, wonder if they're going to get quality medicine. They shouldn't have to be calling, waiting. Is it in? Do you got it? Do you got it? Oh, it didn't come in. Oh, my God, when are you going to get it? I really need it. I really need it. Upset by the raids, the Raishas resolved to file a lawsuit against the federal government. Angel would be the lead plaintiff, but they wanted a second plaintiff as well. We were looking for someone that was just growing for themselves. That was the key component. That's when I saw Diane's article and I got a hold of, you know, Robert. I was like, I printed it off. I was like, look, look, look. They asked me to join in the lawsuit because, in fact, I had uh, my civil rights abridged. I don't know any other way to put it. When they came in here and spent four or five hours in my home, basically home invasion, basically stole my property, I felt very much violated. Monson agreed to join the lawsuit. I felt that it was an important enough issue to leave my privacy behind. I felt 
very strongly that if they could do that to me, that they could do it to anybody that they felt like. They also needed additional legal help and asked Randy Barnett, a noted constitutional law professor, to work with them. I believe in limited federal government. I believe in limited state government. I believe in uh, a greater scope for individual choice, whether Angel Rach is going to have the choice to preserve her life by using this substance that some people don't like. Do they get to make that choice? Or does the Congress get to make that choice? Suit was filed in federal court in October 2002. We sued John Ashcroft. We sued to enjoin him from enforcing these laws against these two individuals. This was about Angel's life and Diane's health. Throughout the litigation, one goal was to increase awareness of the medical use of cannabis. You'll notice all our briefings use the word cannabis. And the reason is, is that uh, uh, we really wanted this not to be a drug case. Uh, we really wanted this to be a case about medicine. It's a herbal form of medicine, uh, which is not something that's a pharmaceutical, uh, but it nevertheless is a medicine, and it's been a historically a medicine for centuries. The main legal argument was that the federal government had no authority under the Commerce Clause to override Proposition 215. The Commerce Clause says that uh, Congress shall have power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with Indian tribes. Why not just say Congress has the power to regulate all commerce? Well, the reason is, is that there's some commerce that Congress does not have the power to regulate. Well, there's only one category of commerce left off the list, and that is commerce that takes place wholly within a state. There is no interstate activity whatsoever, and there's no commerce whatsoever. All of the cannabis that was provided to Angel and the cannabis that Diane Monson grew herself all originated in California. The seeds came from California. We went to efforts to make sure that the John Doe caregivers used only nutrients and chemicals and fertilizers that were manufactured in California. The Department of Justice disagreed. In its view, the federal law was part of a comprehensive scheme to stop illegal drugs. If California could legalize marijuana even for a limited purpose, the market for marijuana would be affected. When you control substances, you have to have comprehensive controls. If you allow some things to happen, intrastate in such a way that they have a real impact on what happens otherwise by way of leakage out of the state or by way of impact on the market that's necessary and proper to deal with some intrastate transactions to keep them from disrupting a comprehensive uh, and extensive regulatory regime or framework that would be nationwide in scope. Barnett knew that the Supreme Court had interpreted the Commerce Clause broadly. Since the 1930s, the Commerce Clause power, together with the Necessary and Proper Clause, has been interpreted by the Supreme Court essentially to give Congress an unlimited power over everything. One of the most expansive examples of federal power was Wickard versus Filburn, where the Supreme Court upheld federally imposed quotas on wheat. If a farmer was growing wheat for his own personal consumption and the consumption perhaps on his farm's farm by some of the animal stock of the farm. So this was an idea that this is very localized. But in that setting, the court said that this affected the commercial consumption that's multi-state. But Barnett was optimistic. The court had recently decided two cases that had taken a more restrictive view. In United States versus Lopez, the court had held that Congress had no authority to ban guns in a school zone. In Lopez and in Morrison, we're talking about acts that aren't even commerce at all. Just being able to put some meaning back into the Commerce Clause is huge because saying that the federal government does have some limits frees up liberty for the rest of the country. Uh, it allows states to experiment. It allows individuals to experiment. Ashcroft believed that Lopez was different. Lopez involves 2,000-foot circles around schools. I can't imagine anything quite as local. It was uh, guns in a school zone. The fact that you had a few cases where uh, they've said regarding the federal government, back off. These are so local that they should be respected for their locality. Doesn't mean when you have nationality in terms of an appropriate congressionally mandated regime of, of, of control for something as serious as, as narcotics and controlled substances that you don't have the federal authority and the necessity for a federal authority to implement it. Barnett believed that this case presented an important issue of federalism. Federalism is not just for conservatives. This case illustrates why federalism is an individual liberty protection. 
it's scoffed at by many people that states' rights doesn't protect individual liberties, states' rights violates individual liberties, because the term states' rights was associated with, a, with racial apartheid in the South. As a justice in your 70s, that's how you were raised. Uh, you have the good guys and you have the bad guys. You just see federal power as something that needs to be protected. This is an age-old controversy. If we were to allow each state to veto federal enactments saying that, well, we're just not going to go along with that. Uh, we wouldn't have the United States of America. We would have the divided States of America, and the whole place would have dissolved. As a matter of fact, a significant effort was made to dissolve it in the Civil War. While the federal government won in the district court, the Ninth Circuit ruled in Raish's favor. It held that the Federal Controlled Substances Act could not be enforced against use of medical marijuana that was purely intrastate. The Supreme Court agreed to review the case, setting the stage for an important dispute testing the authority of the federal government to enforce national laws against the ability of states to experiment within their own borders. 